So it's so nice to see all of you gathering in the middle of the night to enter into the new year in God's presence. And uh, God's presence is here. How many of you believe that? Hallelujah. From the moment we came here, there were prayers happening here from the evening and we were able to really feel the presence of God, the anointing of God hovering upon this place. Hallelujah. I used to always uh, talk to pastor because we, st we stayed in UK for some time, you know, we shared that. So I used to tell him, pastor, there is something special about the country because, you know, uh, the type of revelations we get, uh, the, the type of exp spiritual experiences we get are very different. And I used to tell him that, you know, when we go to India, you know, it's very different. So every place we go to, the experiences change. The spiritual climate changes, you know. The, it's completely based on how the spiritual realm is activated. And the moment we walked into this building, there was a different type of spiritual realm that was activated today. Hallelujah. And, and God has really chosen this remnant generation, you know, which has prioritized God above all. Not going out and watching fireworks, not spending the time out in the pubs, not spending the time watching a movie tonight but to enter into the new year in God's presence. So we are a privileged generation. Hallelujah. So, so last week when we were preparing this uh, uh, service, the watch night service, and I was saying, okay, we're going to do this prayer. And, and pastor told me like, you know, we are going to pray for some time before we get on to the word of God. And God started speaking to me about the church and God gave me a word. And I thought it's very important that we as a congregation understand this word, understand God's heart and, and enter into the new year. Today we live in a world where it is all about three P's. What are these three P's? It is about positivity, it is about possibility and it is about prosperity. Anything we look outside, anywhere we look outside, even in the Christian world, Everything revolves around positivity, possibility, and prosperity. But we read in the word that our God is a God who disciplines us. Our God is a God who loves us. And our God disciplines us so that we can inherit what he has prepared for us. And that could be the blessings which he has kept for us in the world. But most importantly, the eternal life that he has prepared for us. Hallelujah. So how many of us believe that we want that bigger blessing that he has prepared for us? Hallelujah. When I was praying for our church, one of the things God brought to me was a king in the Old Testament. I'm not sure how many of you have read about this person. It's called King Jehoshaphat. Second Chronicles chapter 17 to 21, we read about this king called King Jehoshaphat. So one of the patterns that we see in the Old Testament, when one king's heart is after God, then when his son comes to the throne, he squanders everything. He's go, he goes away from God. So the grandson again comes back to God. So we see such trends in the Bible. We see a lot of positive things about Jehoshaphat. So King Jehoshaphat's father is called King Asa. He's king of Judah and he's king of Asa's son, King Jehoshaphat. One of the things which we know about Jehoshaphat is he tries to work alongside the king of Israel, Ahab. And they go into a war together to basically claim back Ramat Gilead. You can go back home and read about all these things. Second Chronicles 17 to 21 chapters, four chapters. Whenever kings wanted to make a decision, what do they do? They fast and pray. After that, they consult. They consult to whom? The prophets. So the kings call a prophet and there comes an army of prophets. And all these prophets tell King Ahab and King Jehoshaphat, the king of Israel and the king of Judah, you can go against in the war and God is going to give them back to you. Then King Jehoshaphat says, all right, all these 200 odd prophets are saying, is there any more prophet in this country who 
can reveal the word of God. Then he says there is one more person, but he never speaks positive things to me. He always speaks things against me. So the king Ahab says, in Israel, there is one more prophet. I don't consult him because he does not speak positive things to me. Then Jezebel said, don't talk like that. Let's call him. They go and call this prophet. He's called Mikhakan. And he comes. And then he does a lot of revelations there. And then he finally says, if you go, you are going to be shattered. You are going to be scattered like sheep. They don't listen to him. They get into the war. King Haha loses his life. King Jehoshaphat runs for his life. He comes back. He turns back to God and says, God, Lord Father, I'm going to be with you hereafter. Jehoshaphat learns a very difficult lesson where his friend, another king, loses his life. And Jehoshaphat runs for his life. They consulted 200 prophets. And now, there comes another problem. We read in chapter 20, Aramites are now waging war against Jehoshaphat. They are all coming against Jehoshaphat now. And Jehoshaphat is afraid. The scripture says, Jehoshaphat was afraid and turned his attention to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Now, Jehoshaphat is experienced. He has lost a lot in the previous war. Now he turns back to God. He says, all of Judah is going to fast. Then he calls upon the prophet, Jehaziel. He comes back and says, do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. What is the word that is coming? The battle is not yours, but God's. Beloved brothers and sisters, this is the word we get very often. Every time, week after week, when we open the Bible, when we listen to the word, when we have prophets and evangelists coming and talking to us, we time and again hear it. The battle is not yours. It is God's. Something interesting happens now. And listen to me. This is where God wants to speak to you and me. The word of God is a double-edged sword. I am not spread here. What happens next is very interesting. He says, you need not fight in this battle. Station yourselves. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out to face them for the Lord is with you. So the prophet clearly says you don't have to fight the battle. You just have to stay calm. Stay put where you are. See what the Lord is going to do. But now Jehoshaphat's heart, which is completely tuned to God, now that he had had all these bad experiences, losing his friend, a king in the previous battle, he is so tuned now that he has got this word of confirmation and reassurance from the prophet saying, you can go into the battle. The battle belongs to the God. You are going to stay calm. But he does one thing. What does he do? Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 20 onwards. I'm going to read it for you. You can go home and read it. Listen to me, O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. King Jehoshaphat is speaking to his people. Put your trust in your God and you will be established. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. He doesn't stop with believing. He moves on to the next step. He appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised him in holy attire. As they went out before the army and said, Give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness is everlasting. And they began singing and praising. Beloved church, today we are called to be this generation of singers and men and women who praise God, who will go before the army singing and praising and not just settling when we listen to the prophetic word. We have had enough prophecies in our lives. 
We have had enough prophecies in our churches. And now, if you are just going to cling on to the prophecy and not act upon it, I'm sorry, God cannot do anything for us. He cannot go before us in the army. He says, you are not going to fight. You are going to sing and praise in spirit and truth. Hallelujah. Today, Lord is looking into each and everybody's heart. And he's going to ask few questions. And that is what is going to be the prayer for the next five minutes. You know what happened when they went before the army singing and praising? The Lord set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. They started fighting amongst themselves. And they all got killed. Jehoshaphat never waged a war. The enemy fought amidst themselves. And they slaughtered each other. And when Jehoshaphat's army of singers and the praising worship leaders went to the battlefield, all that they saw was dead bodies of their enemies. They did not just see that. They saw great wealth. All the things that the enemy brought left behind for them to take. And they could not take it in one day or two days. They had to be there for three days in the valley collecting all the plunder that the enemy had left behind. They named that valley, Valley of Baraka. You know what Valley of Baraka means? It is Valley of Blessings. Hallelujah. In beloved church, if we as a family are looking to inherit the Valley of Blessings, both here in the physical world and in the eternity, you and I have to act today. If we don't turn to God, as true worshippers, as people who can worship him in truth and spirit. And if you are just going to sit calm, listening to testimony after testimony, prophecy after prophecy, week after week, we are just going to be sitting in the same place. And we have a few more minutes left to close this year. This year could have been a failure for some of us. This year could have been a success for many of us. We would have come across miracles. Some of us could have come across sickness. But through it all, God has been faithful to us. Hallelujah. And this God is going to be faithful forever. And all that is seeking is a group of people who will seek his heart, who will understand his heart, who will execute his will, someone who will worship him in truth and spirit. God gave me a set of questions and I'm going to place these questions in front of you and we are going to start praying. Where is your heart today? Is your heart behind the possibility, positivity and prosperity prophecies which is nothing but fortune tellers or is your heart behind the true word of God? Are you really seeking him in truth and spirit. Are you allowing God to work in all your life's areas? Or have you shut few doors for God to operate in? Are you ashamed of God in public, in your workplace, in your family and community? This question kept ringing in my ears. Many of us don't acknowledge God in public. We want to act like a local, like the majority. We want to seek God only in private. And God is bringing this question to you. Are you seeking me only in your private life inside the church? And are you ashamed of me in the public? Can you boldly represent me by living like Jesus? Do you want to tie up with Ahab and Ahaziah to displease me and face defeat or seek me continuously. Ahab and Ahaziah are the kings of Israel with whom Jehoshaphat tied up and faced difficulties and defeat. Today we have opportunities to tie up with the world, to partner with the world, to live in the world in the worldly ways or we have a choice where we can set ourselves apart to live for the true and living God. Hallelujah. 
We are going to close our eyes. If you want to stand up, you can stand up in your places. We are not going to look around, please. All eyes closed. I truly believe the word has gone into your hearts, raising some questions. Are there any areas in your heart where you still have the flesh operating? Can you open it up for God tonight? Can you ask God in the last few minutes of 2023 to come inside your heart and do a surgery tonight with this word? Make your heart something which just <coughs> reflects the heart of Jesus. Something which is filled with compassion and love. Something which beats for the dying world. Every second, he is burdened by the world which is going to hell. How is your heart operating today? Have you been so far receiving everything from God? And tonight, he is welcoming you to give back to him. If God is speaking to you, I want all eyes to be closed. And if you think God is inviting you to do something for him in the new year, please stand up to your feet. God is going to do great things tonight. God is going to fill each and every one with special gifts. God is going to fill each and every one with his word. God is going to give you directions. God is going to lead you and guide you. If you have been holding back from doing God's ministry, and here is the day where God is calling you. He is saying, my dear son, my dear daughter, I have chosen you as my worship leader, someone who will go before the army, someone who can bring down the enemy even before the battle happens. If you want to really do something for God, all eyes closed, please raise up to your feet. We are going to start praying now. The presence of God is here and God is speaking to many, many, many people's heart tonight. He is opening up, he is opening up and please give the keys to Lord Jesus tonight. He is going to come inside your heart. He is going to open those doors which are secret doors that are locked. He is going to break down all the addictions that you are suffering with. He is going to break down all the problems you are suffering with. Shall we all open up? mouth and start praising God. Whatever language you know. Oh Lord, we praise you, O Master. Oh Lord, we glorify your name, O Master. Oh Lord, you are good. Your mercy endures forever, O Lord. Oh, you don't change, O God. You are not a, you are not a man who is going to lie. Oh, your words are true. Your words are going to happen in our lives, O Master. Lord, we praise you. We glorify your name, O Master.